Your Excellency, President Nangolombumba, President of our Republic, and First Lady Seseki, Madam Seseki Bumba, Madam Monica Gaingos, the widow, the children, grandchildren, shall I say the nuclear and the extended Sandip Kalondo families. Your Royal Highnesses, Your Excellencies, Heads of States and Governments present, former Heads of States and Governments, Excellencies, Ambassadors and Plenipotentiaries of States, Your Excellency, Founding President of our Republic, President Sam Shafishuna Nuyoma and Madame Nuyoma, Your Excellency, our Second President of the Republic, Tatekuru Ifike Punya Pohamba and Madame Pohamba, Vice President of our Republic, Tetumbo Nandin Daitwa, and General Retired Daitwa. Speaker of our National Assembly, Peter Kashavivi, and Chairperson of the National Council, Muha. Members of our Cabinet, Members of Parliament, Your Lord Chief, Chief Justice and the Judiciary, the Secretary General of the Ruling Party, Sophia Chaningwa, Members of the Fourth Estate, Service Chiefs, Luminaries of our Great Society, Prelate Men of the Clergy, led by Bishop Emeritus Kameta, and Dr. Genonakam, Reverend Dr. Genonakamela, amongst, amongst prominent men of the clergy, Chief Emmanuel Gasset, Chairperson of the Traditional Council, Governor of the Region, Laura McLeod, Mayor of Vinduk, and all other important leaders present here. Fellow mourners, today we gather to bid farewell to a statesman, a leader, a unifying force in the history of our nation, the late Hage G. Genko. In this moment of grief, let us reflect on the profound impact he had on our nation and monumental legacy he leaves behind. Generally, eulogizing any person is a formidable task, particularly when it pertains to an individual of Gainkop stature, class, and wits, whose influence inspired our nation. In the medley of our nation, as we commemorate the life and legacy of President Gango, the profound words of Odysseus of the Greek mythology echo through the corridors of time. We ponder the question that Odysseus asked, and he asked the following, and I quote, will strangers hear our names long after we are gone and wonder who we were? how bravely we fought and how fiercely we loved, quote unquote. President Gaingov's legacy not only as a head of state, but also as a deaf negotiator on the international stage. is a testament to his enduring impact on our nation. His skillful diplomacy and adept negotiation strategies were instrumental in navigating some of the complexities of our nation's history. Just as Odysseus contemplated the echoes of his actions, we too must consider the indelible mark that Gaingob leaves on the passages, on the pages of Namibian history. Generations yet unborn shall inquire about the man who was a fierce debater, the master negotiator, and more so loved in his country with great fervor. President Gaingob can be remembered at midwifing our national constitution. What an honor that he was to this country that during a difficult time, he could get it right in a passage of less than 80 days to create a respected Bill of Rights that is respected globally. That is the man we are eulogizing today. President Gaingob shall be remembered by me, who had the honor to oppose him, to hold his government accountable for the last nine years, as a man who nearly single-handedly convinced our country that we must take on the European Union and renegotiate at the EPAS. He did it. And that is the acumen of a man I am eulogizing today. In honoring Gaingov's memory, let us recognize that his actions, like those of Odysseus, 
transcend the immediate present. His name shall endure, and strangers in the future will hear of his deeds, pondering the character of the leader who was present for many historical events in our nation's young history. Fellow mourners, in this solemn moment, as we bid farewell to my dear elder brother, I wish to extend my deepest condolences to you, my sister, Madame Monica Gangos. And I want to start my statement by saying this to you, my dear sister. The burden you carry during this period of profound loss is undoubtedly immense. And it is with sincere sympathy and empathy that I acknowledge the strength and resilience you have exhibited as the pillar of your family. Navigating the intricate responsibility of being a matriarch of the Namibian house was not an easy feat. And your steadfast, steadfastness during these challenging times has not gone unnoticed. The sacrifices you made and the strength you displayed for the sake of your children, your family, exemplify the depth of your, the depth of your character and the love that binds your household. As my wife and I reflect on your poise and resilience, we stand in awe of your grace under such trying times. I know your own husband would have said, Monica, are you a crybaby? You must not be a coward. So I don't want you to mourn by crying. I want you to, to celebrate your life partner. Madam Gaingos, your role as a partner to the late President Gaingop did not go unnoticed. And I extend my utmost respect for the love, care, and support you provided throughout your marriage. I knew Dr. Gaingop very well. And I knew when he was happy. And I can testify in front of all the millions of our people, Hage was happy around Monica all the time. As we collectively mourn his loss, I want you to know that my wife and I are profoundly proud of you. Your resilience, dignity, and unwavering support have been a source of inspiration to many during this challenging time. I say this to you. You took a ceremonial office of first lady, and you conducted yourself that even politicians started to wait what you're saying. And that is the character of the woman you displayed in this country. We are proud of you, Monica Gaingos. As we navigate the tempest of loss, we turn to the words of William Shakespeare, who encapsulated the essence of our shared sorrow when he said the following, and I quote, when he shall die, take him and cut him out in the little, in the little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun, quote, unquote. In the tapestry of our nation, President Gaingop's legacy shines as a constellation, a guiding light that has shaped the fabric of our identity. His dedication to the nation-building project will forever remain etched in our collective memory. President Gaingop often spoke of the test of our nation, being in its unity, particularly during the unprecedented periods in our history. Today we find ourselves at such a juncture, facing a daunting challenges that define our era. It is during these trying times that the unity he championed becomes not just a test, but a beacon a gui guiding us through the storm. Fellow mourners, President Gaingop on the political theater. President Gaingop could certainly be difficult at times, and he made me very, very angry. And I'm sure I also made him very, very angry on the many positions that we took. But President Gaingop conducted a political transactional currency of the highest level that we could disagree as compatriots of one country for months. But we would always view each other as compatriots. We had respect for one another. We were not condescending. We had differences, acrimonious differences, politically that ought to be in a country. But one thing, one thing was, Gaingop was a patriot to this country. And he knew that his opposing Namibians were also compatriots. And that, for that, I shall forever hold him very dear. President Gaingop and I shared a brief friendship in the earlier years of our careers. I was a young man, went to parliament at the age of 26. He was the chief whip of his party, I was the chief whip of my party. And this is where the camaraderie started. I don't want to waste time, but I want to bring this 
small moments in our lives that I will forever cherish as an elder brother. He was a bridge builder of all times. When it was not a common thing in this country for opposing leaders to become personal friends, Hage Gaingob made friends with the opposition. We could go to his house, he could call our homes. We had friendship that the country was not even realizing why he was doing that. But he was a bridge builder. For that I shall forever remain indebted to him. One day, we took a flight, myself and him, he was the chairman of the economics committee, and he made that committee so powerful. And he wanted the best a la cream of parliamentarians to be part of that committee. Long story short, we landed, took a very light aircraft, was seated next to me, we went to Kunene South in the conservancy areas. Dr. Topi Opindi reminded me of the story. He was the managing director of uh, one company called Wilderness Safari or, or something. So they took us on a ride to see the fauna and flora of the area and to see the animals. Myself, President Gaingo, our foreign minister, Pierre Mushelenga, jumped on a car that was open. And as we were traversing, we saw a very stray elephant. And this elephant was charging on the car that we were seated in. Typical Gaingo, you see, he wants us to get killed. We have better assignments to do in the future. Then this car, let's go back. So we went back. So when we arrived later years, Oh, you know, Benami, you were brave for that day. But had you not been, for me, you wouldn't have been even been the opposition leader of this country. You would have been dead by now. Ha, ha, ha. He would love. Above all, the man was a man of principle and code. He had a set of public virtues that brought strength and purpose to his life and to our country. He was a very honest man, even when it offended others. He would take a position, like it or not, Hage would take a position. You knew where we, you stood with him on any matter. Of recent, he took on Germany on the question of Israel and the Namibian genocide. I must say, this man was a man of principle, a worthy opponent, a critical debater, but a man who would always hold hand. I see with great respect the President of Germany is here, Herr Steinmeier. Herr Steinmeier on the motto remains of my friend. Many German leaders for the last many years never came to this country. The last person who was here was Herr Helmut Kohl. It's good that you are here. But on the motto remains of this man and on the work that was started by our second president, President Pohamba, our people, I expecting that the Namibian German case of genocide to be settled. We plead to you when you go back that on the negotiating table create a respectable deal on behalf of our, our people, create an honorable deal so that we close this chapter and move on going forward. Namibia is a better for its presence amongst us. The world is smaller for its departure and we will remain, we will remember him as he was, unwavering and towering. We will remember his husky voice, his jovial smile and laughter. As friends, when the political temperatures went high, my dear sister Monica would toss us one side at state events. The two of us had a weakness not to look like our problems. So Monica would ask, so again McHenry, who is better dressed today? She would be on the floor because Hage would start saying, obviously Hage, how can this young man dress better than me? That is the man who was Hage, always jovial and making jokes when it come to easy time. We will remember his composure. We will remember that, what he, that he brought a sense of calm to an office ever so serious. I recall during the COVID-19 pandemic, if I have to write about Hage Gaingo, that was his best years of being a leader of this country. Hage was conducting these family meetings, alcohol prohibited, alcohol prohibited. Hage would share often 
on WhatsApps on the conditions of the COVID-19, but how he demonstrated leadership during that difficult time, it was something to be emulated. Of course, he was not a perfect man. Hagen never knew how to console someone. Oh my goodness. During COVID-19, I was in ICU. My sister dies, and just as I leave ICU, Hagen calls. Yeah, my young brother, you must know people die. I'm like saying Big G, I used to call him Big G. How do you start like, well, I know what has happened to you, but people, be, people do die, you must just be strong. Continue. That is Sagan. That is the man we are honoring today. Shall I say, death, have thee no shame. Death, have thee no shame. We have been robbed of one of our brightest minds, not just our generation, but also in our history. We have been gripped by laws that affects every household in this great republic. This is not just the death of a public figure. It feels personal. Haka's death is felt everywhere in our country. The elders, the young, everyone, even people from various political parties, everybody is saying our leader has gone. That is the man that he was. I've always respected his views on the free media and that he allowed the media to have a full day with him. He would be questioned on anything that he does, right or wrong, personal or no personal, Hage would be on the front lines. And that's how he treated the media. I'm sure the media will miss him dearly. I will miss him dearly because the, our politics was very loud. Hage would disagree with us very loudly. He would always watch parliamentary debates every day. And if Venani is scoring the goals, he would call certain people, I don't want to name their names. And when they come back, you see that they're hitting. When they're hitting back, I know it's the instruction comes from State House. At this juncture, we must envision a future guided by the principles of unity, service and unwavering commitment to our nation. The challenges we face demand decisive leadership and steadfast dedication to our defining values. In spite, inspired by Gainkop's legacy, current and future generations must work the journey of serving the people. In commemorating him, we salute the work he has done for our country selflessly. As we navigate the path forward, we, sh we should continue to construct what he termed Namibian House that is steadfast, committed to the eradication of divisive elements, tribalism, racism, Regionalism and any other forms of discrimination must find no place within our national narrative. Together as a united country, we must seek to mitigate the challenges that lies ahead, fortified by the values that President Gainkorp's leadership defined. Furthermore, our commitment to high transactional currency has saved our politics. We are one country that has done very well in terms of our democratic credentials. It's not a perfect house, but we are building that house knowing that as citizens, we must continue to support and help a country before politics. Namibian first, country first, politics second. And that is the mantra of the political currency that I and him continue to engage in. We must seize this moment to reaffirm our collective commitment combating the persi persistent challenges of underdevelopment, unemployment and inequality and other, and, and to identify our efforts in laying the foundations for a Namibia that epitomizes goodness and justice. In bidding farewell to President Gaingo, let us draw solace to his favorite word in the Bible, Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. May these verses offer solace and assurance as we navigate the path ahead in honoring President Gaingo.